DaVinci Resolve 20 is here, and the biggest question circulating in the comments is, which features are in the free version? So that's exactly what we're going to cover today. And for you guys that only have the free version, some of these features are going to make your life so much easier. The first one in the pipeline that's available for everyone is the keyframe panel, and it's a way better way to edit your keyframes than the old way. On the top left side of your screen, you're going to see the keyframe panel, and when you click it, you'll see this list of parameters that you could edit. You can make all your changes in here using your inspector and if you click on the icon right here it'll open up your curves panel if you click on the parameters you'll get a drop down menu where you can select which of the parameters you want to affect and this makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing i'm just going to close these out and select my zooms and here you can select your keyframes and add the kind of curve that you want and once you do that you can fully edit it easily using the handles to make the changes that you want and here's a quick tip if you hold shift, it will lock you into whatever axis you're moving in so you don't accidentally affect anything else. The next one that you could use on the free version is the AI beat detector. Long gone are the days of sitting there and marking your beats by hand. Blackmagic gave everyone the AI beat detection. All you have to do is right click your track, scroll down until you see show music beats and just click that. Resolve is going to go through and mark all the beats of the song for you using these lines. This makes it super easy to be able to just drag your clips in and then shorten them to the size of the beat. This is going to be super helpful if you make a lot of edits because you could just cut to the beat of the song. Pardon the interruption, but I recently just dropped a sound effect pack named Rough Cut. And within this pack, you get a sound design workshop that covers how to use your sounds literally, but most importantly, creatively. And I promise after you go through this workshop, you're going to be able to sound design anything. But enough of that, let's get back into the video. The next one that's in the free version of Resolve is the Vertical Viewer. I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but everybody needs vertical video nowadays, whether it's for your own client work or for your own personal socials. And if you've already been editing in DaVinci Resolve to make your vertical videos, you already know how much of a pain it was to edit inside of that horizontal viewer. But thank goodness Blackmagic implemented this new viewer so we can see how our final vertical video is going to be seen. To get to this vertical preview, you just have to go to the edit page and work your way down to this icon right here. And if you still need a little more room, you could close the inspector and you get way more room. This is such a simple change, but it's helped me so much when it comes to my vertical framing. But where it shined the most for me, it's on the color page because I can actually see what I'm doing. This one has completely taken over my workflow when it comes to vertical content. The next one that you have inside of the free version is the multi-text tool. If you make text heavy videos, you're absolutely gonna love this one. As you know, before you would have to stack all your layers like pancakes, but now we can just throw this on our timeline and we can make all our changes within there. To access it, all you have to go is into your effects panel, go to titles and find the multi-text tool. Once you have that, just drag it onto your timeline, open the inspector, and inside of here, you're gonna find all your options for your text. You have three options. You have the point layout, the text box layout, and the circle layout. Every time you select the layout, it's gonna treat it as its own layer here, and you can fully customize it in whichever way you want. You can choose your font size, your color, and all that good stuff. But the one that I found most useful is the text box layout. It constricts your text into a box that you could edit by clicking here, but with the point layout, you could write and it will just fly off the screen. And I've never really been a big fan of that, but it gives you a lot of freedom. But using the text box layout, it just constricts it to that one area where the box is at, and then it just, you know, keeps stacking underneath, which is pretty nice. And for the circle layout, the text just follows the shape of a circle. So you could do cool creative things like this, like write text around your head or around circular objects or whatever your imagination desires. The next one that you have now is the record voiceover tool. This one only used to be on the Fairlight page, but they brought it over to our main edit page, which is huge. This one became a favorite really quickly because I used to record my audio separately on Adobe Audition, process it, and then bring it over. Now I simply just use this, and it's such a huge time saver because I could just record my audio straight into my timeline. And the best part is, it's that it's simple to use. On the left side of your edit page, you can see this little microphone icon. You click on that, and this will open this window. Within this panel, you have your record button, your levels, your file name location, your input, and your desired recording track location. And if you click on these three dots up here, it gives you more options like your input monitoring, a three second countdown. It gives you the option to mute your timeline when recording and your stereo input. If you're a content creator or someone who uses a lot of voiceover in their work, you're gonna love that. The next one isn't really a tool, but it's more of a quality of life update, and it's the ability to copy, paste, and remove your attributes from your timeline clips. This is one that you probably didn't know you needed, but now you do. Now when you copy, paste, or remove your attributes, they're going to be automatically selected in your panel. 
before everything in here was selected so you had to unselect everything that you didn't need and then you just pick the ones that you actually wanted to use but now only the attributes that you made a change to will be selected this makes it so easy to make any changes that you actually want the next one is also a quality of life update and this is zooming in to wherever your cursor is at before when you try to zoom in and you would scroll it would only punch into the middle of your image but now if you zoom in with your scroll wheel it's going to punch into wherever your cursor is at this is super intuitive and it just makes so much more sense. I found this one extremely helpful when I'm color grading because I punch in and punch out pretty often to see if I'm breaking the image or not. And also when I'm using masking tools, it's really easy to punch in and see if there's any haloing or any breaking of the image. So this one is super, super helpful. So yeah, that covers all the free tools inside of DaVinci Resolve that are actually worth having. And this is probably going to be the last video where I broadly talk about DaVinci Resolve 20. And we're going to start deep diving into some of these tools because some tools in here are extremely powerful and you can get a lot out of them. But yeah, if you guys want more DaVinci Resolve videos, you can click right here into this playlist and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.